All right, we're now joined by UFC middleweight Edmund Shabazian, who fights Derek Brunson. Edmund, how's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, let's get into this fight with Brunson. It's been supposed to happen a couple times now. Different reasons. He got sick. COVID scratched it. When all this happened, was there ever talk of fighting a different opponent, or was it always Derek Brunson? Yeah, yeah. There was talk of fighting different opponents, and you know, it just didn't end up happening. And we got the offer to fight Brunson again for August, and we said, yeah, let's do it. And here we are two weeks away now. How frustrating was it for you just because you were supposed to fight Brunson on 248? That was like the last event with fans. It gets postponed a bit, and then all this happens. It gets canceled. Like, Were you looking back like, man, maybe I should have taken a short notice fight or a, a, a replacement opponent? Oh, of course, I, I would have wanted to fight uh... – in March, you know, at the 248, but you know, everything happens for a reason. Nothing frustrating for me, you know. I still stayed in shape, kept kept working harder. I'm actually in way better shape right now, and I've gone way stronger than before. So, um, yeah, I'm even more ready right now. You know, you give me more time, it's gonna be an even better version of me. Uh, we've been scheduled this interview a couple of times. You, it's always been delayed just because your training gets uh, prolonged. Is this something? Like, have you really amped up your training for this one, training longer, training harder and all this? Yeah, yeah, you know, um, we have a strict schedule and we follow it accordingly. And, yeah, I I've been working hard. I'm work I've been working my ass off, so I'm ready to go. In California, it seems like it's starting to shut down, but has that been harder for you to prepare for this fight with stuff shutting down again? Uh, yeah, California has been preparing i think it's shut down already most of its places but no um our schedule has been perfect you know um got our training partners foreign partners ready for when we wanted to go the days we were training everything's everything's locked in you know we have it we have it good to go Derek brunson's a guy two fight winning streak he's a solid veteran was this someone you had your eye on for a while just because he's been a mainstay in the top 10 for so long yeah you know uh He's ranked above me in the UFC rankings, so I think it's uh, probably a matchup to make. And, you know, it's a good step of five for me as far as uh, ranking-wise, you know, and to put me in a good position in the top top 10, top five. Do you think the UFC is kind of pushing you like they did Israel Adesanya? Adesanya beat Brad Tavares. His next fight was Derek Brunson. You're kind of following that same trend. Yeah, you know, I see, I see people, like, saying that, you know, commenting those kinds of things, but... You know, honestly, uh, I'm just taking it one fight at a time. Whatever, uh, whatever they're doing, you know, I, I know they always do it right, and I'm just going in there to beat every person I, I'm in front of. You know, uh, I look at one, I look at it one fight at a time, and my goal is to beat Brunson now for August first, and then whatever's after that will happen. Brunson's a guy that uses his wrestling a lot. Do you think this is the fight where a lot of people are gonna see your takedown events? Because that's something. A lot of guys do try to take you down and you stuff it or you to go welcome down to the ground, just ground and pound them out. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Uh, like, I'm prepared for whatever he's, he's going to throw, throw in my way, you know. We've had a long, long time to prepare for, for this guy and, yeah, I'll be ready for whatever it takes, you know. I'm going to go on that to showcase all my skills. Do you think people underestimate your ground game? Everyone just kind of views you as, oh, this striker. And it's been a lot of talk. Same with Adesan. It goes, oh, wait till he fights a wrestler wait till he yeah. fights this person so on like does that frustrate you people sleeping on or do you accept does that do you like that where people still don't uh like people are questioning your ground game i i think it's it's cool you know uh like they don't know what to expect so once it does happen you know they, they'll see that i i do have it and i i will showcase it in the fight for sure brunson's been a guy that's been knocked out in the first round of uh often adesanya whitaker like you have a lot of your wins that come by first round finish. Like, is this another fight you think you can get another first round finish? You know, I, I never predict like when or how I'm going to finish. If I, I just I'll always say, you know, I'm going in to be the best version of myself and I'm fully prepared to do whatever it takes to get the victory uh, on Saturday night. Uh, Brunson's ranked eighth. Like, where do you think a win over him puts you? Because uh, middleweight division, it's slowly becoming more stacked. Like, you have Adesanya, Till, Cost all at the top. Like, how many more wins away do you think you'd be from getting up to that top three, top five? Yeah, you know, uh, definitely not overlooking Brunson, but with, uh, like you said, a win uh, over him, I think it'll put me like a couple fights, you know, a couple fights away from the title for sure. 
And you're someone that you have a lot of hype behind you. You're someone that can chase still be that youngest UFC champion. Do you ever have a look at like how many long, how much longer you have, or do you not even pay any attention to that? Yeah, I know I have till like it's like 23 years and eight months. So I'll be 23 in November, and then eight months after that will be by July. So next July, I have till next July to accomplish that goal. Do you think the COVID stuff really hurt you because you could have fought Derek in April? And then you could have been fighting a top five guy by the end of the year. But with this setback, like you might not get that top five guy till way later in the year. You might not get a title shot before July. Yeah, you know, I, I said everything happens for a reason. But um, whatever it is, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to reach my goal as best as I can. And, um, yeah, I think so with, with the win over him, a top five guy, if I beat a top five guy there too, I think a title shot will come after that or, you never know. So it might, it might even happen before July. So, uh, how do you see this? Hopes up. Uh, how do you see this fight playing out? I see this fight playing out with me going in there and imposing like a, a lot of my skills that people haven't seen. You know, I want to go in there and really put on a really, really good performance, a, a dominant performance, and uh, I want to showcase showcase a lot of my skills. Obviously, not looking past Brunson, but at middleweight, I was looking at it today. There's a lot of fun matchups for you, like. You versus like Till, Adesanya, Whitaker, those would be all really entertaining fights. Like, do you look at that and be like, man, I'm close to fighting a lot of these top guys? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I even tweeted for one of the, for that Till and Whitaker. I said if if any one of them had dropped out, like I would I would be down to be a replacement. You know, I I like competition. I like the challenges in front of me. You know, and fighting any one of those guys too would be awesome. And it motivates me to even to work harder, you know. Were you hoping this fight was going to be on Fight Island? It doesn't matter for me, you know. Honestly, it's in Vegas, so it's close to me. No time change, no none of that. So, uh, and I fought in Vegas multiple times, so I'm comfortable with Vegas. And even if it goes to a Fight Island, like they say, Vegas might shut down. I'm cool with it, you know. I'm ready for whatever. I have the fight mentality ready right now. I'm in full focus. So. Where, wherever it is, I'm ready to scrap. Yeah, you're a guy you fought in Vegas a bunch, 235, 239, your contender series. like, And the, the contender series is at the apex, smaller octagon. Like, do you think that gives you an advantage where you fought in this smaller octagon before? Uh, honestly, it uh, doesn't really play that much of a difference for me. Yeah, they say the smaller octagon. The good thing about that is like you get into a fight quicker. You know, There's not a lot of room to run. So... Um, yeah, I'm ready for that small octagon too. I I fought in it, so it's 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 cool. And the contender series as well was no fans. Like, do you think that, or not no fans, but limited fans? Like, do you think that's gonna help you fighting in front of no fans here? Yeah, it doesn't make a difference for me, honestly. Like, of course, fans are always like a lot of energy inside the building and stuff like that. But I usually uh, don't even pay attention to that until after the fight. You know, it's cool having fans. And looking up and seeing all the fans cheering after like you win the fight and all that that's the cool part that's the part we won't get to experience but as far as like going in and getting the job done it doesn't make a difference for me hey, your brother leon was on the contender series last year do you think he's gonna get another shot pretty soon at the contender series for sure for sure yeah he's it, since california has been like shut down with fights he hasn't he was scheduled to go in april to fight at a local show so um once he gets like, once the whole thing gets going with the whole coronavirus thing, he'll he'll get a fight schedule soon, and he'll he'll make his way back and be in the UFC soon too. Well, would you guys want to share a card together in the UFC? Yeah, you know why not? That'll be awesome. A main well, and cool main. Imagine. That'll well, be awesome. what, what do you think your parents would do? I'd probably be pretty nervous for that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. My mom especially. She'll be like, she's always nervous. So this way, she'll be extremely nervous. <laughs> do your parents like watching fights because i've talked to some fighters and they say they're like parents can't even watch it they'll just get a text of did you win or lose and all like do your parents watch it or are they too nervous my dad watches it but my mom can't watch it she can't like she waits for the results and then like like one of her friends always tells her like what happens or my dad will call her and say what happened and the way the ufc's working with these a lot of these american fighters they're turning them around quickly like you see fighters fighting two three weeks after fighting does that interest you, or do you prefer to have a full camp for your next one? Um, since I'm young and active, you know, w whatever happens, happens. Uh, I'll be ready. I'm always ready. I always stay in shape. I never go too much, like, out of my weight 
and all that you know i always stay in shape so yeah whatever whatever happens will happen and i'll be ready and there's a lot of key middleweight matchups coming up soon like we have till whitaker we have gasm hermanson like uri hall uh, yol romero like do you have your eye on any of those fights of a next possible opponent assuming you beat brunson for now for now i'm just focused entirely on brunson but those are all fun fights for the future definitely to make too uh i'm down to find any one of them too and your coach Edmund Tavardi, he got a lot of flack when Ron, when Ronda lost to Holman Nunes. Like, does it excite you where he's now starting to get a lot more recognition and people aren't slamming him all the time, saying, "Oh, he ruined Rousey and all that." Like, he's building another homegrown fighter that's a top ten and a future title contender, really. Oh, for sure. You know, I've been with them since the start, so I, like behind the scenes, I know what goes on and everything like that. So, like all those people talking, they're always gonna talk and say try to find the negative things to say but you know I, I know what's being done and uh i i guess my work's showing it as well do you ever train with ronda still because i know in the beginning you used to roll with her is she ever in the gym uh she'll stop by sometimes you know i don't trade with <clears throat> i don't train with her but you know I'll, I'll keep in contact with her and uh she'll catch up with us all the time i know she used to manage you is that still the case yeah that's still the case and what's that like having like one of the all-time greats as your manager? It's cool, you know. It's, it's awesome having having such a big name like her to manage me and like represent me. And I look at it like an older sister. So uh, from a young age, I've known her, and it's cool that she she she's doing this for us. How important do you think she'll be on your way up? Where she's fought in those main event pay per views, she knows what the road to a title fight is. What's a what a camp for like a title fight is like? How, how yeah. important do you think she'll be when it comes to that point? Definitely very important. You know, I, I, I kind of like experienced that growing up watching her and everything happening while she was preparing for those big fights and all that. So I think that that helped me a lot to growing up, having those people, uh, having her by me and like watching her fame and her rise to the top. So uh, that's definitely an advantage I'll have in the future. Do you think it helps having her as a manager just because it's hard to say no to Ronda Rousey if you're Dana White and she's pushing you for a fight or something? For sure, for sure. I, th I think it's awesome having you as a manager. and it's, it's super cool, you know. And with this fight week, you'll have that COVID testing. Are you looking forward to that? Is getting that thing in your nose or mouth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been my first time, so let's see how it goes. Is it the nose one or the throat one? Uh, the I think one? either or. I think it depends which one you want. All right, let's see, let's see. <laughs> uh, who's uh, going to be in your corner for this one? I assume admin. Is your brother going out with you? My brother will be coming up, but he's not going to be corner. It's the same corners I usually have. It's Edmund, uh, Coach Martin, and Coach Jesse. And staying, you mentioned at the beginning, staying on the same time zone instead of going to Abu Dhabi, how much better does that make fight week where you're not having to readjust your sleep schedule, readjust your body clock? It's cool, you know. Uh, like everything, my my body works the same way because California has the same time as uh, Vegas, so everything is good like my training schedule and everything will be perfect and you mentioned that the no fans won't have an impact because you can hear your corner but what about the walkout do you think the walkout's going to be weird <laughs> walk out with music ah, honestly no because in the walkout i kind of have like a like tunnel vision too so like I, i'm fully focused in on the fight and yeah that, that's pretty much it you're a guy that you were active, but this is your first fight of the year. Has it been frustrating just having to sit on the sidelines and not being able to get in there? Not frustrating, of course. I, I would have loved to fight earlier, but uh, like I said, everything happens for a reason. Uh, doesn't doesn't matter for me, you know. I, I'm go. I'm, I've been preparing. It's not like oh, like I've been sitting down, like not doing anything. I've been preparing. I've been training hard throughout these times and uh, just staying prepared and getting getting strong, getting better, and improving myself every single day. So I I'm excited now to finally uh, go out there and showcase, like, my, my new skills. When would, like, are you hoping to get at least one more in by the end of this year? We'll see, you know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And, and co-main event, too. It seems like they're really starting to build you. Co-main event, what's that going to be like? It's cool. First for first co-main event, you know, I'm excited for that. And motiva it's motivational, so. I mean, I, I want to put on a good show. Do you think uh, if a win here, you think you're going to start getting main events in your next fight, coming uh, coming fights? Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Does that excite you five rounds, just being like you're the focus of the poster and all that? For sure, for sure.
it's it's amazing you know it's a it's a dream a lot of people have so that, that'll be awesome to headline an event and just last thing where do you see yourself at the end of this year because you were a guy that had a major rise last year became a top 10 middleweight at the end of 2020 like where do you see yourself in this division at the end of 2020 i want to be at least in the top five for sure all right well edmund that's all every thank you so much for doing this i really appreciate it thank you brother thank you i appreciate it